Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to delve into creating this cool portal effect in Unity using decals and the stencil buffer. All the files you need are linked in the description. I will first go over how the effect works and then show you how to set it up. First let's have a look at the decal script. It's a simple script where we set up some render parameters and render a cube mesh using those parameters. It also draws a gizmo so you can see where the decal will be projected. We use the render mesh function of the graphics API. This function takes render parameters, a specific mesh, submesh index, which is zero for our cube, there are no submeshes, and the local to world space matrix. The render parameters contain settings like what material to use, which layer to render on, a material property block, and whether to receive and cast shadows. The material property block lets us send through additional material settings, like a color or a texture. You might be wondering why I'm not using the URP decal projector here. Uh, that component is very limiting in how you can actually use it. It won't work with any material that isn't a decal shader graph, and Shadergraph doesn't have enough control over stencils and multipaths to make this work. The upside is that this custom solution works in both built-in and URP. So the result of our decal script is this cube. It doesn't look like a decal or a portal yet, because we need a special shader to project onto the floor, and stencils to see through the floor. Stencils play a crucial role in our portal effect. I've covered stencils in a previous video on Zelda Wind Waker light effects, so if you're not familiar or want to know more, check out that video as it goes into more detail. For our portal, we'll use stencils to create a mask with alpha clipping. A very quick rundown of stencils is that every pixel on the screen has a number in the stencil buffer. By default this is zero. By writing to the stencil buffer, we can change this number and do comparisons against it. In this example, we can write the number 1 where our cube is rendering, and then in another shader, on this sphere, we can tell it to only render where that 1 is drawn. This works with hole meshes, but you can also use alpha clipping to change what gets written. Here is the same cube with clip added. The stencil buffer only writes 1 inside of the clipped cube. The clip function discards pixels, so with an alpha texture we can control which part of the mesh gets drawn to the buffer. We'll use this clipped stencil so we can control the shape and look of the portal effect. Now let's dive into the shader. It consists of two passes, the stencil mask with clipping and the swirly effect that sits on top. The part that these passes have in common is the decal effect to project onto the floor, which is done by reconstructing the depth buffer into local space. There's a page in Unity's documentation that goes over this process, if you'd like to read more on it. The only part we're doing different here is that at the end we convert it from world space to local space, and clip everything that's outside of the cube. So by using this depth to local space projection, we can have our texture here showing up on the floor, and that's our basic decal. It's looking very static now, so to add an extra twist to our portal, let's create a swirly vortex effect. We'll use a polar coordinates function and manipulate the UVs to get a spiral, and then animate it over time. The polar coordinates function is the same as the shader graph one, and there's a quick tip for you if you want to use graph nodes but are stuck using code shaders. In the documents for Shader Graph, there's always a generated code sample. You can just take and with a small adjustment, use straight up in your code. The adjustment here is to turn void into vector2, remove the underscore float at the end of the function name to clean it up, remove the out float2 and have the function return the float2 instead. So the function takes the UVs and manipulates them into a vortex shape as you can see best here in Shader Graph. We just add some time to the UVs and we have an animated swirl. We multiply this swirling texture effect with the alpha shape. Here I'm using the star texture. Now if we bring in the other shader that reads the stencil buffer, you can see it's still following the cube. To fix this, we clip the alpha and now it's working as it should. 
Now we have the alpha stencil hole. To finish the effect we add another pass on top for the edges of the portal. In these passes we're adding the visible swirling effects around the hole, with some color and intensity to make it pop. We use the same textures as the first stencil pass, and all we need to do here is take the grayscale swirl as a base for a gradient map, and add some sliders to move the gradient map and intensity of the effect. Okay, let's set up our portal effect. If you're following along, the link to the decal scripts and the shaders is in the description. There's two shaders, one for the stencil hole and one for the decal portal effect. Import these into your Unity project. For textures, I just have a generic noise texture. I'll use the standard Unity particle texture and a red-orange gradient. These are also available on the linked post. Here are the steps you need to follow. First, create an empty game object and add the decal script to it. You can already see the cube rendered here in beautiful magenta. Create a material from the hole shader and create a material from the stencil decal shader. Fill in the textures in the stencil decal material. Add the stencil decal material to the decal script. You may need to tweak some numbers here to have it actually show up properly. Create a child sphere under the decal and assign the whole shader material to this. The whole material will be white by default, so let's make that black. We need a little bit more tweaking to make this look good. Here are the numbers I ended up with here. To make it look like something's inside of the portal, add another object and make sure its render queue is set to higher than the whole material. As a finishing touch we can add some post-processing with bloom and contrast. If you don't see the decals in your game view, only in your scene view, go to render features and make sure that the decal feature is added there. And there you have it, that's the whole breakdown of cool portal effect using decals and stencils in Unity. Try out your own textures and gradient maps for some different looking portals. Thanks for watching, have fun and don't forget to check out my GitHub page where you can find a lot of other tutorials, breakdowns and tips. Big thanks to all my patrons as always. Bye!